fight crime and save New York City from new ominous threats as both Peter Parker and Miles Morales in the PlayStation 5 exclusive Spider-Man 2. Welcome everyone to another Sergeant Sentinel gaming review video. I'm SSG aka Sergeant Sentinel and today we're discussing Spider-Man 2, the PlayStation 5 exclusive. But before we continue, I want to say thanks if you're watching this video. I do greatly appreciate it. Hit that like button if you do enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I upload new content, whether it's live streams, game discussion videos, or game review videos. Developed by Insomniac and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment, Spider-Man 2 is an open-world superhero action game that released last fall for the PlayStation 5, and as of recording this video, it is slated to release shortly for PC. So technically you could say, well, it's not a console exclusive before, but considering it's not and never will be on Xbox, it's still a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Now, taking place after Spider-Man Miles Morales, Spider-Man 2 has you playing as both Miles Morales and Peter Parker, and in this game they're both called Spider-Man. Individually they're called Spider-Man, and I know that does bother some people. They kind of are like, well, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And I get why they say that, but I don't necessarily agree with it. I think Miles definitely covers down and is a quality Spider-Man. Yes, he's not the Peter Parker Spider-Man, but he is the Miles Morales Spider-Man. So if that is something small that does bother you, just be forewarned that they refer to him as Spider-Man in this game especially when he's not around Peter Parker. And when he is around Peter Parker, they refer to the, the group of Peter and Miles as Spider-Man, just an FYI. Now, at this point in Miles' story, he is a high school senior. He's getting ready to go to college, and that does weigh heavily on his mind. He does talk about this throughout the story. It is part of his identity, but also part of his identity is what essentially drove him to fight crime the death of his father and it is a minor part of this story but they do explore it and it does have a satisfying character arc as far as peter parker goes it feels like he is pretty much how we expect him to be Su succeeding at spider-man but not necessarily succeeding at life whether it's jobs whether it's relationships it's rough for him and he can't really find true balance and throughout this game you kind of see how that's really working against him, especially as it pertains to him trying to establish himself outside of the Spider-Man identity, because he's great as Spider-Man, but Peter Parker is just not very successful, and that is an element of Peter's story throughout this game. Now, obviously, a big part of Spider-Man 2 is the action, and Spider-Man either Peter Parker or Miles Morales, they are able to respond to different calls around the city for help, some of them about crimes, some of them just about favors for certain citizens that need things done that they can't do themselves. And just like in the first game, you can, of course, level them up by completing these activities, by fighting, you can unlock different suits. And while Spider-Man, in my opinion, is the game that I feel like I enjoyed more, I have to say that Spider-Man 2, particularly as it pertains to combat and all of the upgrades available, is definitely an evolution of the series in the right direction because it really feels... It, it feels like Spider-Man in this game would be overpowered compared to Spider-Man in the first game, even though in the first game... When you level him up completely, he's still very formidable, but with Spider-Man 2, it adds much needed, um, like I said, evolution to how Spider-Man fights, how he engages in combat, and just how his character is able to overcome a lot of the obstacles you're going to see in some of these missions and against some of the different enemies. Now, something interesting about this is that you can level up Spider-Man, you can level up Miles by himself, and they both have kind of like double team maneuvers they also have there's also the ability whenever you're leveling them up to level up attributes that affect both of them equally like miles will have some that peter doesn't have and vice versa but with the shared screen you're able to level up attributes that affect both of them and this is definitely a great touch because it makes you feel as if they're truly a team and if they're experiencing 
equal quality growth at the same time. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be a Spider-Man game without over-the-top villains, and Spider-Man 2 is obviously no exception. With the introduction of, I believe his name is Kraven the Hunter, he is a main antagonist for this game. He's not the only antagonist. You've probably seen some of the screenshots or some of the videos about this. I'm not going to go too much into that because I don't really want to spoil this for anybody. But I will say that Craven acts as a catalyst for what happens in the latter half of the game. And his, his desire to find the best game to hunt, so to speak, is what causes a lot of issues that Peter and Miles have to deal with from the start of the game through pretty much the end of the game, if you want to think about it. Now, obviously, this character Craven has his own motivations for doing what he does, and he has an army that he brings with him that comprise a lot of the enemies that the two Spider-Men essentially have to fight. And I don't mind that. That adds a lot of... Uh, you know, it adds a lot of interesting missions that you have to go on and different kind of collectible missions that you have to complete. But he's not the only villain, obviously. There are villains from the past, from Spider-Man's past, that do make an appearance. Some of them are only mentioned. Other ones are actually shown. But how much some of them are shown varies. And keep in mind, again, I'm not going into spoilers, but just because these bosses are in the game doesn't necessarily mean Spider-Man is fighting all of them, or the Spider-Men are fighting against all of these, and their presence in the game does tie into the overall storyline for both Peter and Miles in Spider-Man 2. Some of these boss encounters are a little more lengthy than others, and some are just basically cameos, almost cameos. But again, I did find the story pretty compelling and pretty interesting so i'm not going to spoil it for you although i will say that not everyone found this story that amazing to be honest now a big part of pete's story is the presence of harry osborn his best friend and of course him and harry and mj are kind of like the three amigos if you want to think about it they're all best friends they all love it being around each other and a big part of pete's story is of course Harry Osborn coming back. I don't think he was in the first one. They referenced him, his character, in the first game, but he wasn't in New York City. Well, this one, he's back. And I'm not going to really go into his situation because I think it's too spoiler-heavy, so I'm going to avoid that. But he does play a central role in from the middle of the game pretty much onward as far as driving the storyline and what's going on in the world of Spider-Man in the fictional setting of New York, or in their fictional version of New York City. Now, the flashback sequences where they're talking about, oh, we broke into the school, and, you know, we ran from the teacher, the janitor, whatever, I, I mean, I get why they did it, I just, I feel like this is basically on par with those MJ sections from the first game that everybody complained about, where she's doing nothing but creeping around. This is basically that. It takes the place of that. And I didn't really enjoy these at all. I was I was pretty much like, when the hell are these sections going to be over? I'm bored out of my mind. You get the idea. Now, a big part of Pete's story as well is his connection with his Aunt May. Now, obviously, she's deceased. Um, mild spoilers for the first one if you haven't played it. She does die in the first one. So he's still grappling with some of these emotions. But it doesn't help that the house that she left him is behind on its mortgage payment mortgage payments so if he doesn't catch up he's obviously going to lose the house so there's a lot of different things stressing pete out in this making him really question his decision to focus more on spider-man than his personal life and like i said it's an integral part of his story in spider-man 2 just trying to figure out you know what he's feeling and where he wants to go with the rest of his life essentially and now something that i did notice right away is that they changed the look of MJ. Now, in the original, even Spider-Man Remastered, MJ looks one way, and then they change her look where it's it's not just a little noticeable. It's tremendously notable, and of course, when this game released, it drew the ire of a lot of gamers that were basically like, why would they change her look so drastically and make her look like she fell out of an ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down? I agree. There has to be some type of motivation behind it, 
But as far as I can tell, that was really the only female character that they changed the look of for Spider-Man 2. Again, I have no idea why they did, but it's pretty obvious that they did for some specific reason that they had. Who knows? Now, outside of those small issues, the game is a blast. It's great and amazing and spectacular to swing through the streets of New York City again as Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Peter, Spider-Miles, whichever one you're playing as. And now this time around, they actually have a wingsuit of sorts, which makes getting around the city tremendously quick. Now, in addition, if you have a mission that you have to go to, if you unlock enough of the district, you can actually fast travel to this location, and it does make it a lot easier to tackle some of these missions when you're on the other side, and you don't want to have to navigate three or 4,000 meters. Now, the last thing I do want to bring up is the gameplay surrounding uh, MJ. It has been criticized, and... A lot of people brought this up, and I wanted to, I wanted to discuss how she tackles bad guys and another issue that you face later on with this character. Regarding her taking out all these bad guys, she does mention in a statement right when you acquire the stun gun as her that she's had at least some training from Sable. Now, for those of you that remember the first Spider-Man, Sable was this essentially like an elite mercenary who knows how to fight and really take bad guys down so if mary jane had any type of training with her whatsoever it is going to explain how she knows to take down bad guys but it's not like she's taking them down as if she's jane wick because she's not she's she has some idea about how to take them down she uses a stun gun she's still a little clumsy in combat she's not super powered uh, basically if she gets hit twice by these guys she's out so it's not like she has superpowers or ninja training or any of that stuff. As you can see from these clips, a lot of her tactics are very rudimentary and they're very basic. So without the stun gun, she wouldn't be able to take out any of these guys. Just to put that in perspective. Now there is another section in this game that I did want to discuss. I'm going to do it briefly and I'm going to try to avoid spoilers. There's a part where Mary Jane Watson is basically possessed by the symbiote. Her and Spider-Man are having to fight each other. Keep in mind, the symbiote amplifies a lot of negative feelings that you, under a normal frame of mind, might say, hey, you know what, it's not that big of an issue. But with the symbiote, it's amplifying those. So when Peter in the game is apologizing to her and saying, hey, you know what, your dreams are important too. I'm sorry I neglected you, all this stuff. It's not, you know, him apologizing for being a man. You have to understand that he has to basically pull Mary Jane's mind away from the symbiote he's the little angel on the shoulder the symbiote is the devil and he has to basically outbid them so to speak so the situation where people are like oh he's apologizing for being a man that's taken out of context what really happens does make a lot more sense aside from the regular gameplay there are a number of puzzles for you to unlock and complete and they are just as enjoyable as they were in the first game so if you do enjoy these types of puzzles there's new types that you're going to enjoy as well and, of course, different types of missions or tasks will have different types of puzzles. So it's not going to be one solid type that's going to have you bored. So the gameplay for this is obviously a blast. Being able to use the wingsuit to quickly navigate around the city. And now that you have the other island unlocked, you're definitely going to need this wingsuit. Because you'll have an entire area you have to cover quickly. Sometimes you can't do it because it's in mission and you can't really fast travel in a mission, but with the wingsuit and with these green rings that essentially act like a wind tunnel, they can propel you a couple miles in a very short amount of time. So the gameplay, like I said, is improved and a lot of these elements are a hell of a lot of fun and it was truly an enjoyable experience for me. So despite the small negatives of the game, like the glass not breaking when this vehicle is thrashing about, Spider-Man 2 is still a very enjoyable experience, and yes, there are very small things in here that some people might not enjoy, like some people brought up an LGBTQ flag, or small elements like that. They may not be something that you particularly agree with, but they're very small in the scope of everything else, especially considering how quality the story is. Both Peter Parker and Miles Morales, it makes them feel as if they're best of friends, like they're brothers, and that what happens to one happens to the other. And that's why I stress that this isn't just one or the other story. It's both of their stories because their stories are essentially intertwined. 
And while they do have their own separate lives, their their bond with one another is really what drives this story forward. And it's, it's essentially what this story is all about. If you want to look at it from the most basic level, their relationship with one another, not only as crime fighters, but as Peter Parker and Miles Morales, that is essentially what this story is all about. So if I was going to give Spider-Man 2 a score, I would probably say 8.5 out of 10. That's my score. Now, not everyone's going to agree with this. Everybody has their own opinions, and that's fine. Um, but that's how I would rate it. What did you think of Spider-Man 2? Did you play it yourself? Are you still waiting until it goes on sale? Or are you not interested? Definitely leave your, uh, your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to read them. If you did enjoy this video, definitely hit that like button. Share it with other people on social media so they can see it as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, take this opportunity right now to do so and to hit that bell icon. This is SSG, a.k.a. Sergeant Sentinel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take it easy, gamers.